guys, so as I promised, we are doing a video on tax returns. I know, I know, guys. I feel the same way. Every time I drive down the N1 and I see that big billboard that says tax season has opened, I actually just want to cry because I'm just like, mm, what am I actually expected to do? What is an I, IRP5? Which, what am I supposed to claim? What am I not supposed to claim? If I've got rental property, do I claim my rental income? If I've got a home loan, do I claim that? What, like, listen, okay, can somebody just give us a crash course? And guess what? <laughs> we did that. We went and found Andre Botma, and he's going to give us a crash course on how to actually do your tax returns, especially when you are a beginner. He does have a YouTube channel where he's done a video like this, but today we're gonna ask him targeted questions because we want the answers. Andre, give mm. the people what they want. Okay. Ready? Yes. Awesome. Maybe do a quick intro and then I'll go to the other side and we can get this going. Okay. So who is Andre? Uh, Andre comes from Oslo Bay. He started doing tax in 2009 mm -hmm. and he's been doing tax for the past 10 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> it's life. It's been tax, 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 tax. Yeah. Uh, and I did small things, uh, photography and I did Amway and I but I've always been in the personal finance space. Mm. My grandfather did personal finance. Mm. Um, but I want to teach people about tax because I know that a lot of people don't know how it works and a lot of people don't know why they pay tax or mm. what it's for. Or Yeah, and um, I think if people know how to do it, they'll be less scared of SARS. Yeah. There's no reason to fear SARS unless yeah. you're doing something wrong. Unless you are evading and not <laughs> avoiding because apparently the rich people what they do is they avoid and not evade. Exactly. Okay, let's kick this, let's get this off the ground. And this is what Andre had to say. So the whole idea behind SARS is they are a collection service. So they collect all the taxes on behalf of the government. Okay. And SARS's job is to, once they've collect all this for treasury, they can di then distribute it to the different municipalities and for the different allocations that Titu and Bueni would say this goes for education, this much goes for health, this much goes for um, uh, social welfare, um, general infrastructure. So it's all. So the reason why we pay tax is because companies won't necessarily set up companies for social welfare. Mm -hmm. There might be non-profits that will do that, but um, tax goes specifically for things that private companies won't necessarily provide for. Mm -hmm. um, also things like dams, bridges, also hospitals, police service, the, the, you know, the, um, the army is now in Cape Town, so the army also, um, it comes from taxpayer money, so yeah, that is what the tax is for. Uh, so there is, this, there is a threshold for individuals, which is about uh, 87,000 Rand uh, per annum, that if you earn below this amount, uh, you don't really pay pay tax on that amount any amount after that then you start paying pay as you earn so it's so the first 90,000 for the 2019 tax year so I was just saying if you earn below 90,000 you don't need to pay uh, you don't need to pay tax but do I have to file returns no if you work for one employer so one company and you earn below the new threshold is now 500,000 yes you work for one company you earn 500,000 and you are claiming no deductions and you are paying pay as you earn then you don't have to file a tax return i need you to clarify that again if my salary yes from one employer yes is less than five hundred thousand per annum yes i do not even have to file if i don't have any deductions that i want to claim for correct if you have deductions then you must file the then you must file because correct. then you must get your deductions yeah because so you can you get, a get a refund Oh my goodness, do you know how that is going to help a lot of people? Because a lot of people <laughs> think that they have to file. No, and I, and I want to touch on something also. A lot of people, there's this misconception that if you file your tax return, you are going to get a refund. Yes. That's not true. In order to get a refund, you actually have to have paid more, more. tax than you should have, or you are claiming deductions that's available to you. Okay, so and and I love that you said that because there's also a possibility that you could have been paying less tax. Correct. And you yeah. might owe. Yes, subs. especially if you have a rental property mm -hmm. or you have your own business um, that that's generating income that you haven't paid pay as you earn on yet. Mm -hmm. So any income that you earn that you don't pay pay as you earn on, you must pay tax on that. So now. 
that that is a sticky situation. Yeah, um, it's not a situation that comes up often because often the the, the employer is they they're quite good at the RP5 is usually very accurate. Yes. In the case where they deducted not enough pay as you earn, it's a matter of is the income that's on your RP5 correct? Yes. If it is and there's too little uh, pay as you earn, then you are responsible for the tax. And I can't get any recourse from the employer. No, you can't because they they the on the RP5 is what you earn. Yes. So unless the RP5 is wrong, wrong itself, then you have to go to the, to your employer and say, I picked up this error when I did my tax. My pay as you earn didn't cover it. Can you please help me and, and explain to me why the tax isn't working out properly? But but okay. So okay, let's just go two steps back. Some I might have missed that answer. Okay. You were saying. If the the, the the amount on the RP5 is correct. The income. The income. Yes. But I still paid less tax. I'm still liable. But now correct. my tax gets deducted before it hits my bank account. So how can that now be my responsibility? It, it depends if the, if the RP5 shows that the company deducted 10,000 Rand a month. Yeah. And your RP5 only shows that you that they've deducted eight thousand rand a month. Yes. Then the then both then both the tax the the the, the employer and the taxpayer is, is responsible. responsible because ultimately yes. at the end of the day you are you are the taxpayer. Correct. So you are still responsible. Yes. So you can't shift that type of a blame. Hundred percent. Okay. So in other words, then people need to actually know. Make sure that your RP5 is correct. Make sure your RP5 is correct. Yeah. But how do you against what? So if you've never seen an RP5 in your life. <laughs> <laughs> what are you benching it, it against? How do you know what you are supposed to pay? That is that is hard. There are there are tax tables like personal finance. Every person scenario is different, yeah. and so a, br a broad answer for one specific question is. Um, but Would yeah, be difficult. It, yeah, but, but you're saying at the basis, just yeah. know the the the, the around about how much you are supposed to pay, Correct. so that if they're not deducting that amount, then you yeah. can flag it with your HR Correct. department. Yes, yes, yes perfect. Yes, yes. So you get different um, you get different types of income. So yes. you get investment income, uh -huh. which is local interest, foreign interest, local dividends, foreign dividends, and REITs, real estate investment, investment trusts. Trust. Okay, that is all investment income. Then you get royalties. Mm -hmm. And you get rental income, okay. which is also two types of investments income, but they are they are uh, they are submitted differently in a different category than normal investment income. Okay. And then you get small business income. Yes. And that's if you're a sole proprietor, you do something from home, you've you've got a small business and you've got income and expenses. And those are all so those those three types of incomes are 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 submitted separately oh, on the tax okay. There's There are sections, separate sections for that. There's also other income, like non-taxable income. Non-taxable income must also be um, like must donations. Also be declared. So, yeah, donations income. If you if you received an inheritance, that must also be declared to SARS. Um, there's also the type of income that if you work for more than six months out of South Africa uh -huh. and you are outside of its borders, then a, a large majority of that will be exempt from tax. Oh. So that's the type of in exempt income that people can earn. Like so, so if you're a salaried employee, you must know a few things about yourself. Uh -huh. You must be able to ask yourself, okay, I worked for one employer. Yeah. Okay. Do I have one RP5? Yeah. Is my RP5 showing on e-filing or at SARS? Is yeah. It there? Uh, do I have medical aid? Is my medical aid automatically pull, pulling through on e-filing because uh -huh. it should? Do I have retirement annuities that I'm contributing to? Uh -huh. That also pulls through automatically. Only RP5s medical aid and retirement annuities pulls through automatically so i'll find them so let's say for instance i'm going to to e-filing they will already be there and they if i go to there. a branch the branch will already have them yeah but you have to refresh the data that there will be a button that you have to click so you tick rp5 medical retirement annuity click refresh it updates the, the new it updates ones. your tax return and then you can go in and there your rp5 will be and your and your sorry and your, and your retirement annuity will be there and your medical aid if you have that. So if it's not there, yeah. I would need to go back to the institution and ask them to load it? No, you, you can ask the certificate from the institution. And load it yourself. And load it yourself. Okay, yes. brilliant. Okay, so I've logged in to e-filing or I'm sitting at the branch mm. and 
and as you said medical aid is there which is generally what most the average person will have medical aid um, a, a retirement annuity and you said which on your actual RP5. salary yeah, yeah. which is the IRP5 right okay perfect so now I've done that do I actually have to claim for medical aid or if the uh, the medical certificate is already there? Yeah. The medical medical aid is, a, is, a, is an interesting one. Yeah. SARS gives you a credit on your contributions that you've made. Yeah. So a certain amount, so depending on how many dependents you are paying medical aid for. Uh -huh. Medical expenses that the medical aid doesn't cover, you can claim for it, but you need to, you need to have more than about 8% of medical expense, eight percent of your income must be on medical, medical expenses, expenses for you to get any tax benefit from it. Oh my goodness! Back in 2012 and prior to 2012, you could claim medical expenses as a deduction. Yeah. No longer. No longer. And if you do that, you need to have your receipts, right? Yeah. Um, your invoices or whatever yeah, they are. Yeah. Especially your larger, larger invoices. If you if you are medically. Uh, uh, what's the word? inundated yes, <laughs> or like it, yeah. yes. if, if you if you are dependent on pharmacies if you're in and out of hospitals uh, you, you should have uh, good record keeping of your of your medical expenses if your medical expense or if you're a fairly healthy person trying to claim additional medical expenses isn't going to help your tax situation okay. First yeah, a lot of people have a bond on their own house. Yes, that's not going to give you a tax benefit. Oh, in America, yeah, I think in America they call they call it they call it a housing allowance or something like that. Yeah, or, or a, a housing deduction. In yeah. South Africa, you can claim your bond interest against rental income on the bond that that rental income is on. Oh, okay, so no, 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 bring it back, so bring it if, back. <laughs> so if you have a rental property, yes. if you own a rental property on 2021 20, uh, Berkeley Road, yes. and you have a bond on 21 Berkeley Road, yes. then you can claim the interest for that year that you're being charged on the income that 21 Berkeley Road is generating. Oh, okay. I think I understand. So you get, I'm gonna a, start so you get an interest deduction because okay. of the bond that you're paying. So let's start again. I've got a bond. Yes. I'm paying 9,000 Rand on the bond. Yes. I've got a tenant yes. who's paying 8,000 Rand on the bond. Yes. So what am I claiming? Only the interest. Only the, Only the bond interest. You can't claim the bond payment. So the bond, the, what they're charging me as an interest. Yes. So I need to go into my bank statement and calculate the all statement. the interest. Yeah. yeah the I like I like from March 2018. So yes. March 2018 until February 2019, all the interest amounts. Oh my goodness! Why has nobody taught you can us also these things? Highlight all the all the bank charges amounts because it can charge you can claim the bank charges as yeah. well. And you should be able to claim the the the, the property insurance. Yes. For that as well. Okay have if your employer pays you a travel allowance mm -hmm. in order to claim back on your travel allowance you need to prepare a logbook and the logbook is supposed to log your 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 starting kilometers to ending kilometers for all your business trips that you do mm -hmm. and SARS wants to know okay you did business trips they want to know your reason for the trip um, and you log all your kilometers that you do business wise for the whole year mm. and then your, and then they work out, or you can work out with with your tax practitioner. And but it's a fairly complicated uh, thing to do on a tax return. L let me know if you need help. Yeah. But claiming the travel allowance deduction is basically that um, the amount of business kilometers over the total kilometers driven with that specific vehicle. Oh. Then you can claim a certain amount As on business, your yeah. on your travel allowance. Okay. The other the other way is if you're an independent contractor or you earn commission yes. and you drive a lot around, yeah. you can claim a lot of expenses on your on commissions or independent contracting income. So then then you also have to do a logbook. Yeah. But then you can claim but then you can claim a percentage of your motor vehicle expenses. Oh, so the entire so your insurance can also be included. Yeah, so if you spent a hundred thousand on petrol and, mm. and, and a bunch of uh, motor vehicle expenses, if you drove sixty thousand kilometers uh, for business purposes out of a hundred thousand, you can claim sixty percent of that against your commission income or your independent contract income. Oh my goodness, this is also interesting. 
Uh, okay, so this is my scenario. Worked in, um, and I think it goes back to the question I had asked earlier on about um, how does it, how does SARS deal with different incomes, right? Mm. So let's take it from one income classification. So I, I was a salaried individual in more than three companies. Okay, so there should be three RP5s. But, but okay, great. Then what does SARS do? Does it push me into a different bracket? Or would SARS calculate on each so one? So there'll be, there'll be three separate RP5s. Yes. If, if you worked for more than one company in, for, if for some, for some, if there was no gaps. Yeah. But your, but your income was high and you, they, they pay, they pay the pays you earn based, based on the on salary. the income they give you. For that company. Yes. There might be a chance that if you have more than one RP5 that you paid too little pay as you earn. Yeah. Because now the total income is more than, than the, the different individuals. Yeah, yeah. And, yes. And that is that is Moa's problem, not not your not the different employers' problem. That, that happened you, that to you, me. Yeah, unfortunately mm. that does happen. I I've had cases where a person would go from eighteen percent to twenty six percent because they get because they had to because the, because what SARS looks at the the, the total collective income, yes. the total income but from a company perspective that company works out your pay as you on earn this. on on that month's salary as if you received it for the year ah. and so there might be a discrepancy between what SARS says you've earned which is usually 100 percent correct mm. SARS makes very very few mistakes when it comes to assessments and things mm. like that um and then versus what the company sees, which is because the company's view is like they they looking through a tunnel for but themselves, SARS, yes. yeah, for themselves, and SARS is looking at the whole picture, yeah, for the year. Yeah, that's how I got screwed. I had to pay in January some ridiculous amount because SARS was like, no, you, this is not your bracket. You, I was just like, whatever. No, okay. Minus so means a refund. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no. No sign or no symbol means a you payment. owe them. You Can owe them. I dispute that? If the assessment is incorrect, yeah, then you can dispute. How many times? You can, well, you can dispute once, yeah, and then it will it will be a computer thing. If it, hopefully you get to a, a person at the end of SARS who yes. will look at your objection and then say, okay, I'm either going to allow it, meaning I'm going to I'm going to correct our mistake. Yes. Or I'm going to say your dispute was invalid for some whatever reason, reason. Or we're going to disallow your objection. We're okay. not going to allow it. Okay. In the case that they disallow it, oh, they they can also partially allow it, which means that they are, they allow a, a, a portion only of only a portion yeah. of your adjustment. If they disallow it, then you can appeal. Okay. Then you run to your tax consultant. Because now you're doing court cases. Exactly. <laughs> also, an objection is in fact a legal stage. Yes. Never forget that. Ask advice first before you submit an objection. An objection. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Documents. What am I supposed to submit? Submit everything as if you filed your tax return. So you submit your three RP5s yes. if you have it. You can submit, if you have rental income, you submit your income statement. So yes. your rental income, your rental expenses, you can send that little statement to them. Mm -hmm. If you have medical aid, send the medical aid certificate to them. If you have a retirement annuity, send the retirement annuity certificate to them. The, the, the first check that SARS does this, the first audit mm. is actually just a check from SARS side. Is what you filed Indeed say correct. what you filed? Uh -huh. And you've got your documents. Then the second request. They might send you a second request and say, listen, you must submit the supporting documents again. Yeah. That's not what it means. What does it mean? You need to either phone SARS say, or you need to problem? go to the branch and yeah. ask, listen, I've got this case number or SARS asked a second request. Can you please specify exactly what SARS is asking? Because ah. then they'll say, oh, no, uh, okay, we, we've got your rental income statement, but can you please send me your bond statement? Oh, can you please send so we can me check on the, the interest. Okay. Um, there might be something else that they that they want to double check yeah that might not have been covered in your first yeah so they need to specify because relevant it must be relevant yes that's why the first request is general yes but, on the, yeah. but with the second request it must be relevant 
to whatever they are asking. Because you could you could keep sending the wrong document. Yeah, and then and, and then, and then you agitating and, and then them. They can, and then they can issue with additional assessment. Yes. Because they think you know what you must send. Yes. And you keep sending them the, the same the things. same things. You know what's funny? And that I happens. had that last year. Yes. I kept sending the same financial statements, and eventually they took the money away. But whatever. Yeah. Okay. So. I wouldn't I wouldn't say I think there's definitely some I don't know I've never worked for SARS uh, but I know SARS systems fairly well yeah there are certain things that will flag that will create and uh, that uh, like a trigger high. yeah yes. there, there, uh, there, there are a couple of things if you're making constant rental losses uh, on your rental properties that's a that's a flag for SARS you're so the, the, more the, expenses, the, yeah, the expenses are more than what you actually get yeah in. that's an easy trigger if you if you have an expense item on your business that seems very big that you are claiming for um, that will probably trigger so trigger whatever something. is out of the ordinary yeah, out of the ordinary if you have the basics like an RP5 also if you only worked for six months mm -hmm. um, and you only file that one RP5 for six months they'll probably do an audit and, and they won't ask you specifically what happened with the other six months mm -hmm. but they are it, it will raise a flag so as will ask can you please send me all your RP5s so if you're a freelancer, you are play, I place you in two type of categories. You are either an RP5 freelancer yeah. or you're a freelancer that freelances yourself. Yes. Or you're a combination. Okay. If you're a freelancer where you only get RP5s, you do a whole bunch of jobs for a whole bunch of companies, then you can claim expenses against against that uh, freelancing income yeah this uh, is when they don't ask you for the tax directive right yeah and, okay and, and you've got a lot of pay and you've paid 25 percent pay as you earn on all your jobs that you did okay freelancers pay 25 so you're saying people who are freelancing when they go and negotiate their rates they must already know 25 percent has yeah, to go to 25 percent is going to be the rate okay yeah um, unless there's a reason for SARS to give you a lower rate because okay. you physically have to apply for it. Then if you're a commission earner um, or you're an independent contractor who, who does not do jobs for companies but you invoice out of your own pocket, yeah. you're in a tough space because that means you, you there's no pay as you earn that's being paid and you need to track how much income, and how much income is coming in because I would advise keeping about 10 to 15 percent of your income in aside for accounts. taxes. Yeah. Yeah, because people get nailed for, with, with in, in that category. Yeah. Um, because because of the fact that they used to be an employee paying all the pay as you earn and a tax being sorted for them, now they are invoicing people and no pay as you earn is being paid. Mm. And all of a sudden, you get a bill from your tax accountant who says you must pay SARS 30k. And it's such it's such a future. A date. Yeah. It's almost like a date. It's a future it income a that you've got to pay. It is, in fact, a future date. Yes, because yeah. that's that's where I am currently right now. Where um, a lot of the companies will ask me if I've got a tax directive or something yeah. like that, and they don't deduct a tax for me, so they expect me to pay the tax. Correct. But now, man, the money yeah. is just coming and, to my account. Yeah, so and, you know, and and, and, and that is, and that is where a bit of financial savviness has to come in. Yeah. I would recommend creating a type of an emergency fund or a separate emergency fund separate from your day-to-day -day banking yeah. which is called your tax fund yeah. type of a thing and so for every for every 10 rand that you receive one rand must get, go into it gets called tax and you don't touch that money come high hell water because SARS is the worst of any creditor that you can owe money to. all right I think in I think in general people aren't aware of that that they are, that they have some tax deductions available to them. Mm -hmm. So consider getting a medical aid if if it's financially possible for you. Look at retirement annuity options because SARS gives you a lot of uh, a lot of grace, a lot of deduction, amount of deduct that you can deduct from a tax point of view. Mm. Uh, an RA is a is a decent product. Um, I think another mistake to make is not is not sending the supporting documents, the audit not responding fast enough, uh. not objecting fast enough on, on an assessment. Whenever you get uh, information from SARS, go onto your e-filing or phone SARS up and say, listen, I, got, I just got something from you guys. Uh, what am anything, I supposed to do? Is there anything I need to do? Um, that's a big thing. So, and, and, and just keep your documents. So keep your RP5s, keep your medical aid uh, certificate, keep your retirement annuity certificate, draw up a logbook if you get uh, a travel allowance. Um, 
and I don't expect you to, to, to learn tax by the book, but don't um, don't be scared to ask questions. Uh, don't pretend it doesn't so exist. No, ask SARS questions. They are sometimes willing to answer you, mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise reach out to to a, to a tax practitioner because often they are willing to answer a lot of uh, a lot of questions for you. Tax practitioners can be really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you don't know what they're charging for, mm -hmm. um, so you want to you want to know what their fees are and what do they charge for. If they charge you for every phone call that they make and things like that, that's a bit petty. The tax practitioners you want to know how much they charge and what do they charge for. Mm -hmm. um, also. So they might not answer. They might not ask all the all the questions. So if you've bought a property, if you've sold a property, Tell notify them. them. Oh. They are they are there for you to email and to bombard them with questions. You pay them a lot of money. You're supposed to get some something for it. Mm. Um, yeah. So be in. Have a, play tennis with your with your tax practitioner. All right. Um, and yeah. is it fair then for a tax practitioner to say, don't pay me? I will take 10% of your refund. Is that is that fair or is it dangerous because it means this person is going to try and get a refund? Yeah, in, in, in fact, uh, charging charging a percentage based on the refund is actually against the general uh, code of conduct for the SIT. Um, you are not allowed to to charge to charge that, and the reason for that is you can create fictitious uh, yes. deductions. SARS is very good at picking that up as well, so you you'll get in muddy waters for doing that as well. Um, I think a flat fee or a, or a fee based on the amount of work that's being done uh, that is that is generally the best. If you get if you get charged a, a percentage, listen, I'll charge you a percentage fee on on your on your refund. Run the other way. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely. Because that person clearly doesn't understand the law. Yeah, avoid them. All right. Thank you so much, Andre. <laughs> it's no, been it's great. A Please plug your YouTube channel. It's you can just you can just search in YouTube, literally SARS e filing or Andre Botma. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on top. I don't have a unique channel name yet. And give us the Twitter handles and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, everything. It's just uh, it's just Twitter for now. It's at Andre twenty eight zero seven one double nine zero. I'm not gonna ask it's for my what that number it's, is. <laughs> it's my birthday. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Bye. Michelle. Bye bye.